No autographs, please. No autographs. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the Black and Brown Get Down podcast. Uh, I am your host, and we are at my very, very favorite segment in the podcast um, called Black Love, Brown Pride. Ow. And we are here with the very illustrious uh-huh. face beat uh-huh. jeweled down to the feet. Okay. I wish we had a shoe cam. Shoe cam. It's giving Yale. Oh, ooh. Divinity School. Yes, it is. Excuse me. It is giving uh, Columbia Theological Seminary alumna. Yes. Uh, hello. Yes. It's giving writer. Yes. It's giving pasta. It is. Pasta. 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 It's giving sex and body, body positivity. Her. It, I mean, what what else? It's also giving, uh, <laughs> like, you always talk about this, which I love. We're going to get into it later. Uh, being a child of immigrants. Mm, yeah. First generation Caribbean American child. Listen, that that's a heavy <laughs> eldest sister. Okay. That's the 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 you under the, 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 the cloak. Crown. Yeah, you <laughs> under the cloak, but you wearing a crown. Oh come on! You're I put on cloak. my jewelry just to go to the bodega. Listen, and we are at the bodega. Yes, we are. Uh, AKA the Cornerstone, uh, New Orleans style. Thank you and for so, having me. Yes, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Listen, I don't want to get too deep because we're about to explore all the things. All the things. We're going to talk about centering uh, black women. Yeah. We're going to talk about masturbation. Of course. We are, so this is not an episode for... <laughs> the babies. Yes. Or, or the uninitiated. Yeah, or the uninitiated, yeah. <laughs> so if you're ready to be initiated, they come on. They come the through, room. right. But we're going to talk about all this through the lens of... Aww. Sensual faith. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. My debut book. I'm so proud. Yes. I'm so congratulations. Proud of Thank you. Now, I know I would usually, uh, or the people would usually ask uh, the writer to read something. Uh huh. But I would like to read something. I would love to hear what you would Listen, like to read. This shit is so deep, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it is so deep. And oh, oh, can we talk about our drinks? First of all, we are having a. Liberia. Liberia. I thought it was Liberian. Oh, Liberian. Liberian okay. 1820. A Liberian 1820. Clink. To liberation. Ask us what's in the Liberian 1820. Now, if you don't know what li- what happened in <laughs> Liberia in, in 1820, 1820, I'm going to need you to Google that. Liberia 1820. Mm-hmm. Get your... We bringing people in. Yeah, let us know when you find out. Tag us on socials and let us know. Listen, what the, okay, so what the get down is. Um, yeah. So yes, as I've been <coughs> sipping on my ooh, that's why I didn't handle cheese. Oh, uh, that's why I handle cheese. Uh, uh, Pretty good. Not Dilly got the mass <laughs> mandate again. <laughs> uh, Cut that out. Well, I can tell you, we gonna act and cut up today. So please <laughs> be easy. Ease, yeah, ease, ease, flow. Ease, That's the ease, energy of ease. today. Float, yeah. as Janelle Monae mm-hmm. has asked us to do float. Okay, so um, I am going to read something, which usually, it, this coincides with the first question we always ask folks, but this is sensual faith, the art of coming home to your body. Yes. This is a beautiful book, sis. Thank you. So I read this a few weeks ago um, when I went, well, b- about a month and a half ago when I went to uh, Jamaica on a rest mm-hmm. trip. On a solo rest Thank trip. Thank you for taking me with you. That's what I envisioned. Listen, because- Mama Sita was at Rock House, which is really, I, this is, uh, they don't give me no money for this, but it is the best resort. Is on, it? Uh, the best hotel, yes, on in the grill. I don't know, because the only- It's the th- very best. I've only been to Jamaica twice. The first time I was 19, this is when I was pursuing modeling, and this photographer, Roland. Because Long listen, Island. why do you shine in these, like- Look, I'm a goddess. It, I mean, it is giving, it. it's the melanated <laughs> skin, but it's like- When well, you got that glow. Hey. Listen, the glow. Uh-huh. Yes, and so went, and we went to some fest, and it was super fun. Then the last time I went to Jamaica, I was getting grown. I was being fast at hedonism. Okay. Listen, where their 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 motto is. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. Can we turn the AC down? Is it possible? Seriously, 
to turn it down because it's, it's, it's getting I'm warm screaming. in this thing. Where their model is pursue pleasure. So I'm with you. They're not putting Oh, you me were a uh, at... Uh, what's it a called? A kink friendly, lifestyle friendly. Swingers yeah, what resort. is the people's called? Uh, swingers. No, it's not called Poly? swingers. No, what's it called? Polly. No, what's the resort called? Hedonism. Hedonism or hedo. Hedo. If you were okay. the no. Okay. Well, uh, you turned it down. <laughs> Okay, yeah, cause I need that 68 talking to her. <laughs> you need Jesus. that 69. <laughs> so listen. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> Girl. Yeah, so I'm glad that you had rest. My last trip to Jamaica was restful, but it was also very active. It was giving, it was giving, it was giving, it was giving. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I am. You, child. Yeah, and I'm going to, you know, this is for me, really. Yeah. This really, this episode is for me. And I'll talk about all the reasons why. But here's what I wanted to talk about. So one, um, this is big idea. Yeah. And this is actually something that I'm really exploring right now, which is why you are so timely. Aww. You are really, really so timely. So let me, uh, we're going to get into the episode, okay. but I'm going to talk about why this shit is so timely. Okay. Because you talk about coming home to your body. Yep. And really being able to be in your body. Yeah. And one of the things that... Uh, through in, uh, slavery, through colonization, mm -hmm. some shit, and through uh, patriarchy mm -hmm. and capitalism. One thing you cannot do is be in your body. One thing they don't want you to do. But when you are in your body, that is countercultural. Listen. And that is inherently an affront to the system. And so if you want to put cracks in the foundation, love up on yourself. Yes. Take a bath. Take a nap. Yes. Masturbate. Yes. Eat well. Yes. Hydrate. All the things. All the things. And so that's what I want to talk about because this podcast is really about how do we, um, as black and brown people, mm -hmm. learn about ourselves, love ourselves, center ourselves. Yeah. But uh, very, um, how do we teach each other to remember yeah. who we are mm -hmm. and how to be? Yeah. And how do we uh, practice freedom? Mm. And practicing freedom Sure, it's like the politics, and yeah. uh, everybody want to fucking put a suit on and go do that dumb Photo shit. Ops. You know, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and hold the shovel, you right, know, right? Breaking hold ground, the, the oversized scissors, <laughs> the over <laughs> breaking ground, <laughs> cutting the ribbon. But it's like, can you be free with yourself? Mm. I see a lot of people, and I'm like, your ass is not free. My God, you not free. And so, to me, what I've been exploring is through meditation, through, you know, healing my yeah. body and through being in my body. Yeah. It's like, can I practice freedom through being myself, through yeah. being in my body, Correct. through, like, um, having sovereignty. That's the word. In my own self. Sovereignty was my word of the year in 2021. Ooh, come on. You know, I, I'm two years behind. I, no, just, you're not. Just two. <laughs> no, you're not. But the, the fact that I was really finishing the book and curating mm. my platform around sensual faith and you're picking up on that energy tells yeah. me that I did the work that I needed to do, that I internalized it myself, that I created from that space so that the readers and those who are going to be ingesting my words yeah. are also too yeah. activating that energy and Give receiving thanks. it. Ashe. And so for me, it's important to know that, yes, I'm an Emmy Award winner. I know how to tell stories. Yes, I'm a Queens girl. I'm from New York City. You won't get it all the time, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. I forgot uh, <laughs> to say that shit. She's from New York. Yeah. Period. You're welcome. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> for loving a New Yorker. Mm -hmm. um, no, but I'm also a joy finder. And that means mm -hmm. that anything that brings me joy, I am going to pursue with reckless abandon. Mm -hmm. And for me, a part of my joy journey came in realizing that Pursuing were something with reckless abandon. <laughs> That this idea that I could not center my pleasure because somehow it was not spiritual, mm. right? That to center myself <sighs> means that I am not a servant of the world mm. or a good person of faith or just a good daughter mm. or woman, right? When the fact of the matter is, if I am not well, y'all not gonna be well. Yeah, because yeah, I can't yeah, show yeah, up yeah, the yeah, way yeah, 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 that yeah. I need to. So yeah. yeah, I'm gonna center myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And here's why this is for me. Mm, come on. Because yeah, because you know, uh, I'm on my freedom journey, on my uh, healing journey, yeah. uh, and always on my faith journey. Come on. I want to be the most faithful woman. You, you know, are. Uh, right. I don't and, know nobody more faithful than you, Mary. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, 
yeah, to your yeah, community, yeah. to your people, to your ancestors, <laughs> to your purpose, to your calling? Do I need to keep going on? And on? But this is why this shit is so important. Because, like, in a real way, if you cannot um, operate from that, that's the core. Yeah. That's the strong place. But in my mind, why this was important, mm-hmm. because in my mind, yeah. I was really like... I, we'll talk. Oh, I told y'all we're gonna talk about masturbation. Go for it. We're gonna there. talk about desire. We're yeah. gonna talk about pleasure. All that stuff. I was just like, it, it's until I get married. It's until you know, yeah, like yeah, I yeah. had all these things that made me repressed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sexually repressed, of course. But also made me also very vulnerable. Yes. To motherfuckers who's out here preying on yep. people who don't know no better. Uh, hello. We didn't talk about it. Uh, hello. So if you're black or brown, you probably were raised in or in the vicinity of a religious organization, Mm -hmm. right? The black church, the Catholic church, the Bautistas, like something was going Mm -hmm. on. Evangelists. (laughs) Evangelists. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jehovah's Witness, Mm -hmm. what have you. Definitely not a (laughs) J-Dub, but shout out to the J-Dubs. No, wait, listen, hold on. I I do want to start it because we didn't got too into it uh, because, you know, we got to honor, we got to put a stake in the ground. We are here to honor... Um, those who came before us. Okay. And so, uh, may I read my dedication? Yes. yes, please. This is the most powerful dedication. Thank you. The most, I mean, literally, you can get the book <laughs> and stop at page one. I'm screaming. Over. <laughs> Done. Thank you. That means a lot to me. But, but, okay. To my grandmother, Norma. Yvonne. 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 Osborne. You reside in my cheekbones Mm -hmm. and my will. Mm. Thank you for guiding me from the great beyond. Mm -hmm. Till we meet, I look for you at my altar and in my reflection. Oh, God, I'm crying. (laughs) Because I never met my maternal grandmother. And she transitioned when she was 36 from breast cancer. And I believe a broken heart. And everyone says, you look just like Norma. You look just like Norma. And I look at pictures of her. And, you know, she's 5'9". And she's statuesque. And her hair was always done in hats and pantyhose and the whole thing. And I'm like, for me to have never known you, I know you. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's why ancestral veneration has been so important to me on my journey. Because... It's like I never got to see her in the flesh, but I see her, Mm. you know, and I'm I'm so grateful because I wrote this book for me, but like also for her. Yeah. (laughs) So thank you for seeing us. I appreciate. Yes. Thank you for these beautiful words. Thank you. Thank you for for (laughs) saying, uh, well, we're going to do the first order of business. Okay. So are you named after her? I am. So interesting story. So she's uh, say her name. Norma Yvonne Osborne. Yvonne and your love I'm Levon. Here's the thing. My mom was pregnant with me, and my mom's coworker was also pregnant. My mom told the lady, I'm naming my daughter Amanda Renee. I was supposed to be Amanda Renee. The lady had her daughter before my mom had me and named her daughter Amanda fucking Renee. <laughs> Amanda Renee, you ain't right, girl. Your, your oh, well, mama ain't, ain't right. Her mama did it. Your mama ain't right. So my mom was like, well, what the hell? You stole my child's name. I need to come up with it. But I actually had a numerology reading. Mm. Um, shout out to Dr. Uh, Craig E. Wright, who told me, no, you were so powerful that you changed your name in utero. He said you needed a name Woo. to match the vibration of your destiny, and Amanda Renee was not it. Because mm. when you look at numerology yeah, yeah, of Amanda. Milan, it matches my call. Oh. So my grandmother's names are Lynette and Yvonne. So my paternal my maternal grandmother is Lynette. My maternal grandmother is Yvonne. So my mom put them together and made Levon. And I walk with my grandmothers every day. Mm, <laughs> that's like Transformers. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you the bumblebee. You the bumblebee, girl. <laughs> you the bumblebee. Listen. Um, yeah. Yeah. These, I, one, you're, I love your writing. Thank you. It's just, uh, it's beautiful. One of the things that you like, uh, well, one, uh, tell us what was happening. So this was 2021 when you wrote the book? I started writing seriously September 2019. That was when I had gone through a divorce. I chose myself in a marriage that was not serving me. And we separated in February 2019, filed 
I filed in March 2019. It was finalized mm-hmm. September 2019. Okay. So this was after Megan Thee Stallion had the whole hot girl summer thing. And I was like, oh, ma'am, I want to shake my ass with you, but it's going to be a healed girl summer for me <laughs> because I need to release yeah, this yeah, relationship yeah. that I thought was going to be lifelong. Actually, yeah. that's a lie. Let me, let me not lie in the podcast, child. When we were dating, I knew he wasn't the man for me. Mm. But I was like, I'm 32. He's a good dude on paper. Like, let me just do this. Anyway, so when I started to see my spiritual journey. Because we got a lot of healing to do. And this is as, something, yeah. whether at 32 or at 42. Yeah, hello. Or some people at 52 or at 62. 62. Right. 82. Right. And, and there's this deep desire to choose your to to be chosen yeah and uh the centering of mm-hmm. yourself is actually to choose you right we'll talk about that in a second but uh, keep i feel going. like it keeps coming up i feel like it's just a thread right yeah, like yeah. we're gonna dance with these t- themes and topics yep. the whole episode um but essentially i was on a spiritual journey i was figuring out who i was now that i was no longer a wife and yeah. a pastor um i'm gonna I, get some more yeah uh, get, champagne. get another champagne oh, oh you got me uh, yeah yeah we get more bubbles because <laughs> it's gonna be good it's gonna be good listen the, the answer when people say which champagne do you want i say yes right <laughs> yes bubbles, is please. the answer but okay so um, um so yes yeah, fall of 2019 is when i started to use social media as a spiritual practice i was like let me just share the lessons and gems that i am receiving on my journey with others and that's when things started to grow so I remember I met a religious new, a religion news reporter, shout out to mm. Liz Konecki, who was like, how can I support you? And I was like, I want to write a book. She was like, okay. <laughs> so she started to introduce me to agents and acquisition editors and stuff mm. like that. And yeah, I was like, okay, now that I'm meeting people in the publishing industry, I need to get this book out. Like I've been toying around with it for like six years. Let's sit down and write. And then COVID- Even while you were married. Um, you had been no, thinking no, no, about no. it. No, 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 I was writing, but it was from a very different place. It was, okay. So for my journey, what's been important has been to do four things, right? One is to decolonize yeah. my Christianity. I was born mm. and raised in the church. And when I found out that the one we and, call Jesus is, was African, I was like, well, hold on now. What you mean he African? That mean, uh, G- Some Jesus people still think he's white. Africa. So what you mean? Jesus is not white. Jesus was a nigga from Nazareth. I'm okay. quoting Reverend Dr. Matt King Carter, Okay. Okay, we'll Jesus, talk us through it. Cause Jesus, shit. Was it's a lot of people in, in, in the. Listen, and they ain't gonna be mad, and I don't care. Jesus was black. Jesus was mm-hmm. a nigga. Jesus was African. And so I realized, I was like, well, then that means he had an African mama and African aunties, and they was learning African shit. So right, what does right, that right. mean for me as right. someone who grew up with this white Jesus? Right. Because of British imperialism and colonialism. She's talking about Barbados. Your, Barbados, your Bayesian side. Yeah, my mom's from Barbados, my dad's from Guyana. And when you go further back, on my mom's side, we're from Sierra Leone, and on my dad's side, we're from Angola. So now I'm thinking, okay. well, what did my ancestors believe before? Damn, you got some black ass I, ancestors. Look, I mean, <laughs> Sierra <my> Leone and <laughs> Angola. <laughs> I'm like, and y'all wonder why I am the way I am. I Woo! grew up listening to Little Kim and Lady Saw, and y'all wonder why I am the way I am. Right. Stop. No, I, I don't wonder, in you fact. Don't, you don't. <laughs> I, I, I was a general you, not a Mary. Yeah, I don't, in <laughs> fact, because it's... It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it does. And then secondly, to reclaim our African traditional spiritual base and practices, right? So I started learning about Ifa. I started learning mm. about Hoodoo. And it resonated with my spirit. And I was like, honestly, we've been doing this African shit. We just yeah. didn't call it African. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when yeah. my paternal grandfather transitioned, we did a nine night service. I didn't know what that was, but they put out food for him. And, you know, they were like, yeah, this is the night where his soul transitions from the earth back to heaven. Now, we would say, you know, back to the ancestral realm mm-hmm. now, or I would. Let me use I language. Um, but, yeah, so that was a part of and my And that was on the well. night he transitioned. Yeah, the ni- at the nine, the ninth night after his physical body. Which is why they the do ghost. the Novenadio, which Ooh. is. Uh, Tell me about that. I don't know. Well, that. yeah, that's some Catholic, Catholic shit, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I grew up Christian, but uh, you can't be, you know. Uh, from any place in Latin America and not also be Catholic. Sure. sure and so sure, sure. a novenario is you pray, you do your rosary, all, whatever uh-huh. you're doing and, uh, for nine days after... The person transitions. Right. Wow, you're praying that. for their body, you're praying for oh. their transition, you're praying for their transition, wow. and on that ninth day you have a party. You know, like you have yeah, a... Yeah, that's exactly what we did. And, and that may be different and the same than the timeline of when you bury them. Yeah. You know? 
But it feels very African and very indigenous, which 100%. is something that black and brown people need to do is stake a claim and claim your birthright yeah, yeah. of these traditions and these practices. A lot of people have trouble with that. Yeah. And as I have been, and I'll tell you because in my family, so my grandmother, so I was raised mostly by my father's side. Okay. But, um, and in my family, they have trouble still even saying, eh, this native ass lady like (laughs) who was four feet tall and fam she's like you Um, know the most powerful being no 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 no. she's like in fact (laughs) like indigenous as fuck (laughs) and i'm like why are y'all scared to say like your tribe why are you scared to say like you know um like what land you come from yeah like what is the problem the it's it's not our fault though see because the way colonialism is set up right colonialism identifies an act on the mind and colonization is an act on the land and the Mm. body and so when you have these forces Mm, come on say it again colonialism colonialism is an act on the mind it's how you think it's let me get into your psyche, right? Mm. It's the, the seed of the illusion of white supremacy. Mm. Colonization is an act on the land and on the body. I'm literally going to take over this land and I'm going to brutalize your body, dehumanize it, commodify it, right? Brutalize it so that I can And how would it. you tie that with enslavement? Oh my gosh, well, it started with the bodies. I mean, just them pale folks showing up and bringing all kinds of smallpox with them right you just wiping out Mm -hmm. thousands of people because what the fuck is this Mm -hmm. (laughs) my immune system ain't never seen no shit like this before right literally and then you bring in guns and what are these horses yeah right so just that but then the only way to dehumanize and brutalize someone else is you have to first dehumanize and brutalize yourself Mm -hmm. and so colonizers go through that Mm -hmm. went through that are going through that where if you have to see something in me that you consider animalistic or savage Mm. who's the real savage here Mm. and so that's why i say it's an act on the mind yeah may i ask uh your grandmother norma Mm -hmm. she was on your uh maternal or paternal side maternal and maternal Mm -hmm. um uh i'm actually being called to bring my paternal grandmother into the space may may i bring her bring her please uh, yeah so her name was uh julia so we used to yeah abuelita julia and so i'm gonna bring her into the space i I actually did not start venerating my paternal ancestors until i came to new orleans Mm. so i was living in atlanta right because i told you i don't really know (laughs) anybody but my daddy's side but yeah right in the spring of 2020 the house that i was renting got sold and so I was going to go to Barbados to finish writing the book and to do mm-hmm. research on our, our family lineage. Couldn't get into the country because <laughs> Americans are gross and our COVID rates were so high. <laughs> and they were like, you're not coming in here. Right. And so I kept pushing and pushing. I had things in storage. And, you know, my pastor was kind enough to be like, hey, come stay with me. But she was doing like this 10 day silent retreat thing. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm going Where? to in-, in her house. <laughs> She was like, you can come stay with me, but just know for the next 10 days, it got to be quiet. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I'll see you in 11 days. I'm going to New Orleans. Because New Orleans is my favorite American city. The Mm. first time that I came here was in June 2018 for Essence Fest. And I was living in the Bay. And everybody's like, oh, you know, you can walk around with alcohol in New Orleans. And I was like, y'all, I've been drinking since I was two. I'm not intrigued by the alcohol. I'm going for it. putting that shit on your gums. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's putting that in the baby bottle. Let's get it. Mine just rub a little on the gums. Right, right, right. right. She'll be less fussy. I have a little something fun. But um, when I came here, I immediately just fell in love with Shout out to all the good parents. (laughs) That that is good parenting. Y'all might try to call CPS Mm -hmm. on them now, child, but. No, fuck that. I come from a family of addicts. That shit ain't Cool. Oh shit! <laughs> okay, you gotta know your people now. Right, 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 you gotta right, know what family right, right. you said yes to <laughs> and came to this. Listen, because be because um, that is a thing, right? Like when Absolutely. you when you are coming into this realm, yeah, uh, it is said that you have a choice. You do in African cosmology. We believe that your life is laid out for you, and the council and the spiritual mm. realm and the ancestors. They're all like, so listen. <laughs> you gonna break time and space you come in into this group of motherfuckers <laughs> this person gonna get elected this shit about to go down you gonna go through this are you willing we got you from here but are you willing and you say yes you sign on the dotted line and you have a soul contract and then you come to mm. earth and you come to fulfill your purpose mm, I share. 
I say uh, to your spirit for, for laying that out because a lot of people need to know. Yeah. Um, you know, our work, uh, I was just actually thinking about it. I was like, damn, I hope funders ain't listening to this shit. Well, there are <laughs> some listen, funders. There are, right, right, right. <laughs> but, um, Here's the thing. Listen, no, no, no. Go ahead. I'm going to let you finish. I, I just said that, but I was like, but if they understand our strategy, you know, our strategy is how do you work within the system to build the system's capacity to, for now, deal with, uh, like, the greatness of who we are. Because they don't know how to deal with that shit. Sure. So that's kind of within the system. Against the system is we're going to have to um, go against the system to work on policy, to do all the things. For sure. Right? Lawsuits, whatever. Yeah. And then there's without the system. Mm -hmm. When we are organizing people and we are doing leadership development, Mm -hmm. people need to hear from people like you. They do. Because we're building leaders. And guess what? If leaders are just docile as fuck and just on that colonial mindset that you just described. And also, if you don't have a sense of a higher purpose or calling, right? Like, I recognize that. that there are people from different walks of life when it comes to faith. If you are an atheist, right, you still have a core set of values and ethics. Where are we aligned in that? Yeah. Now, for African and indigenous people, I argue that it's impossible for us to be atheists because it's baked in. Now, you cannot believe in the colonized religion of your childhood, right? You cannot believe in organized religion. But I know you know that your grandpappy, <laughs> right, your abuelito, is talking to you from the great beyond, is sending you messages, and that too is spiritual work. And so I'll close this part by saying that I love that point that you raised because I remember watching an interview with the incomparable doctor, I almost said Reverend Doctor, but Dr. (laughs) Angela Y. Davis, who she said, you know, the one thing that we got wrong in our political movement was we didn't care for ourselves. Mm -hmm. She was like, we were so busy on the front lines and protesting Mm -hmm. and, you know, doing all the things. She was like, but we weren't getting enough rest. We weren't Mm -hmm. eating well. We weren't hydrated. Mm -hmm. I was like, what's the point, Adrienne Marie Brown, right? Mm -hmm. Pleasure activism, the politics of feeling good. What is the point of doing all this liberation work and you are bound, tired? About to die. <sighs> you can't do no work if you dead. Let me let me pump up my curls. Pump them, girl. Uh, curls for the girls. Curls for the girls. And the boys and the non-gender conforming folks. Oh. Okay. Well, give us a second to just You need breathe. a deep cleansing breath? Just Speak. breathe. Or a sip. Or both. <sighs> A it's slurp. Both a slurp. Listen, we all need a slurp. And pleasure activism also talks about slurping. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> okay. Because I want to read this quotation from you. This is pleasure activism is a Bible for me. I'm not even I'm not even joking. Mm. Adrian Marie Brown, I love you. There is no way to repress pleasure and expect liberation, satisfaction, or joy. Mm. Say there it again. is no way. Oh, I was about to. There is no way to repress pleasure and expect liberation, satisfaction, or joy. Yeah, it's given. Uh, you might be Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> Because Gen Z, let me tell you, them, them young people. I'm an elder millennial. I'm an end, elder millennial. But I as read well. younger for sure. Yeah, yeah, same. Um, yeah, that's why I had to get off into my graphic novels. You know? <laughs> had to get off into uh, the anime. You I'm know? screaming. Uh, because that's what the young people are into. I was like, shit, whatever y'all into, I'm, I, I need to be right there. Okay, but, get into it. Yeah, I don't even know where I was going. Now, here's what I will say is I actually just heard Angela Davis, a speech she gave, uh, which you just talked, mm-hmm. uh, you just talked about her. The but, girl track one? No. Uh, no, 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 it was a UC Davis conversation that I'm talking about. Oh, what no, no, no. I was talking about another one. She was talking about, like, basically um, talking about the difference between uh, feminism and womanism. Oh, let's talk and, about it. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and she was talking about specifically like how when uh, feminism is all about like pushing through the glass ceiling <laughs> and that that still in in essence is about hierarchy right mm-hmm. because the people who are closest to the ceiling uh those people are white mm-hmm. those people are affluent those people have status mm-hmm. those people know language know all of the things and have all of the access because they shit they just saying hey uh, i can't push through this like glass ceiling Right. right, but womanism, yeah, 
Talk and you about talk it. about that in your yes, book. Yes, I do. Right? Sensual face. That per. Uh, and so, talk, <laughs> look, let me let me get into my nose. Yeah, let Taylor, me get into, can I have a, a splash more, please? Uh, you know what, Taylor? Muchas I'm going to have gracias. a splash more, too, please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because yes. it's getting good in here. It's huh? getting good in here. I ain't going to lie. You might be the best. Oh. It's giving the best. It's giving a blessing. La mejor. It's giving a hello, la mejor. Y todo es español. Sí, claro. Yo estudié en España, en colegio y en... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y yo, como se dice, uh, aprendí. Como se dice is my favorite. Aprendí mucho. Okay. Is that right? Well, I learned Was a lot. Right? Yep. Yeah. I learned okay. a lot. Child, the liquor is kicking in. I had a brain fart. Oh, you did all right. How do you, you say fart right. in Spanish? Uh, I don't know. How do you say penis in Spanish? Como se dice... Como se dice peen. Como se dice fart. <laughs> uh, yes. Which so is also point. like for Mexicans, pedo is like, que pedo? Like, like what's going on? Like, not like... Um, the fuck is wrong Like, you, you got smoke? Which oh. is literally gas and smoke. Oh, I like that. So hmm. if I see a sexy Mexican and I'm like, oh, I want the smoke, yo quiero. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I'm not Mexican, so I can't <laughs> tell you how to operate with the people. <laughs> but I, what I can say is I didn't heard a lot of shit being from California. So listen, feminism was for white women, right? In the 1920s, when the suffragettes were marching for voting rights, they were not including black and brown women. We were not a part mm-hmm, of the conversation. Mm-hmm. So here comes the illustrious Alice Walker in 1979. She coins this term womanism, which yeah. she introduces in 1983 in her seminal text, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens. Mm. And she lays out this eloquent four-part definition of womanism, which I advise everyone to read at some point in your life, preferably soon. And, um, when I'm introducing the concept of womanism, I love to use the four, well, the third one is my favorite, right? Because it's very sensual. But the fourth one says, womanism is to feminism as purple is to lavender, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Womanism is to feminism as purple is to lavender. So like we're in the same wheelhouse, we're in, uh, in the, on the same color wheel, but there's something but deeper. Fam, we not the same. Richer, right. darker right. about the experience More of royal. Life. Come on. And you know, let's get into the yogi system, right? Hello. Purple represents the crown chakra. Yeah, so that yeah, spirituality, yeah, yeah, yeah. that knowingness, that ori Come on, for my Nate. Ifa folks, right? Like that connection mm. to spirit. Like that is there. I ain't never heard a feminist talking about God, you know, where spirit. have you been our whole life? Look, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Here I am. Woo! You're welcome. Yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, go. yeah, yeah, go. Sergio, hey, yeah, go, hey, yeah, go. twerk, twerk. Yeah. Look, <laughs> not, not twerking to Sergio Bailador. Um, I love it. It's Listen. the drums for me. It's the diaspora for me. It's diaspora. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Listen. Yeah. You talk about also. Uh, this very famous interview that if you ain't seen it on TikTok, you ain't seen it on Instagram, you ain't seen it uh, in vintage, uh, like, reels and, and imagery. And at this point, I see it in my, like, in my What memory. interview are we talking about, girl? The Nina Simone interview. Oh, yes. I you talk about it in the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she's saying, basically, because mm-hmm. again... Why this, all of this is important? This shit, like, it sounds like we're kikiing, but mm. we are practicing freedom. This is it. This is what it looks like. This is what practicing freedom. Black and brown freedom, women kikiing. Practicing freedom looks, feels like. Yep. Right? Sounds like. Sounds like. Glee. Listen, laughter. Because we are intellectual beings. We are. We are spiritual beings. We are. Right? We are somatic yeah, beings. Yeah, get to be all We of are dealing in all of the things. Yeah, for sure. And so she talks about, like, um, freedom mm-hmm. being ha- what is freedom to you and she says what is freedom to me I'll tell you what freedom means to me it's no fear two words no fear who would you be if you showed up with no fear not saying that the fear won't be there or what we call fear because I do believe that fear is an illusion I do believe that what we fear quote unquote it's what's on the other side of the thing that we're called to do. Yes. Or what's on the other side of making the decision. So we don't fear boundaries. We fear people leaving us because we implemented a boundary. Yes. Right? We don't fear divorce. We fear being single for the rest of our lives or being shamed because we got a divorce. So I'm very careful with that word fear. 
And when Nina Simone says that, or when I watch her say that over and over, I see a look in her mm. eyes. I see a ferocity about wanting to show up free and uninhibited and liberated. Mm. And that is my inspiration God. for me and how I live my life. Mm. <laughs> Not you, my man. God. Look, look, when you get a good word, it's like you getting good dick. Because the face, the look on your face right now. My God. It's like you getting good dick, but you get a good word. But God. But God. Hallelujah. Listen. That's what it is. So to your point, I'm, I mentioned the first two things that I did, which is decolonize my Christianity, reclaim my African spiritual base and practices. The third thing was to heal trauma related to my body, mm. right? I am a black woman spiritual leader who's no longer at war with her body. Mm. So the fact of the matter is that I know that my body is good mm. and holy just as mm. it is. I know that my sexuality we'll get into that in a second. Yeah. Y'all. My sexuality is a sacred gift. Mm. It's the abuse of sexuality that is mm. evil or wrong. And I had to really shed a lot of religious and social mm-hmm. and cultural conditioning around that. So for Black women and femmes and black folks and brown folks who don't feel comfortable in your body, of course you don't. You've been taught or conditioned, habituated to be an inhospitable environment for your body. Womanism says your sexuality is a sacred gift. Uh. Womanism says your body is holy just as it is. Yeah. Womanism says pleasure is your birthright and is mm. and you don't have to do anything to claim a birthright you know just be born things, and claim it one of the things i love about this book is that you're not just taking in you're practicing so mm-hmm. i'm a big 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 me big, too big like i i everything is a practice for me yeah right i'm an organizer yep uh, that is my training my trade yeah. my so Organizing is like, you only get better with time. Right. Excuse me. Um, so you have to practice it. It's kind of like preaching. You only get better at preaching by preaching. Listen. Yeah. Speaking by speaking. And so you have this reflect, celebrate, and yes. affirm in after every chapter. I do. I do. And to me, that's the practice component. Because so many of us, especially, you know, many of us have come into this work through academia. For sure. And so we just think like this, you know, <laughs> it's like uh, the practice for academia is like um, publish or perish. Yeah. Right. So right, yeah. right, 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 and that doesn't seem that just seems like I want to get in, I want to get mm-hmm. in, I want to get in, and the practice is like, can you embody? Can you integrate? Can you like move? Yeah. In the knowledge that you have brought in. Yeah. And bring in more knowledge and be open. Yeah. Right? Which is vulnerable. It is. To bring in more information as you're Mm -hmm. coming and going. And as you're in the process. And to evolve as you get new information. To say it's okay to change my mind or to think differently. What made you uh, have these prompts for people at the end? So This is a beautiful (laughs) book, y'all. Like, I really, really... Like, and you don't... I I posted... (laughs) I posted, but you know me, uh, you know, you were over last night for dinner. I and was. So, uh, yeah. um, and I'm so, special. Right. <laughs> uh, we ain't going to talk about dinner. I did cook dinner for the people. And she did. I don't smoke oil. It, it was it, good. It, it was very good. Her. But listen. Okay, but well, go ahead. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, I don't get excited, uh, so excited about shit. And it's really hard to feel... Uh, uh, like shroom and mm-hmm. like taking over, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but uh, when I do, I have to be careful because you know, bitch, be like, Ooh. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 I was and I was really like mm-hmm. um, seduced by this. Ooh, that's such a good word. I, I was seduced by this tongue emoji, tongue emoji, tongue emoji. I, so I, I, I'm because, glad that you were because. The practice piece is important. Tell it us is. why. I'm a practitioner at heart, mm-hmm. right? Like, as Dímelo. much as I'm a... Dímelo. Dímelo. As Dímelo. much as I'm a theologian and a Dímelo. thinker. Dímelo. And, okay, period. Per. As a scholar, as a thinker, as a writer, as an author, how do you take what you need for the journey and implement it so that your life actually improves mm. on the other side of this yeah. because how many books have we read that are for personal development or self-help or whatever and you read through it you don't do the prompts 
you just you forget what the book yeah. even said how many sermons have you heard you don't even remember what the pastor preached two weeks ago yeah. right it's like no i want you to savor this text and so it was important for me to one meet people where they are right most people have some familiarity with the bible and scripture so what scriptures can i pull out to point to your good naturedness like your mm -hmm. inherent goodness mm -hmm. not that you're a sinner saved by grace and you're a wretched worm scorched scum of the earth like come on bro like i'm not i don't see that yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. also how do you celebrate where you are mm. like i talk a lot about mirror dancing where you dance naked in the mirror i do that as you should queen oh my god <laughs> it's so sexy and sensual oh, and empowering OMG. can i tell you i do that yeah. all the time so you know, as someone who is in a bigger body, like and sexy as hell, and sexy as hell. Listen, like one shout out to my mom Vilma uh, because uh, I get my hips from her. Okay, per hips don't extend. lie. They extend. no mentiras, no mentiras over here. They extend uh, very vastly into take uh, up spaces. They, they take up space, baby. Yeah, baby. Per 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 per, and um. And, and my mom taught me how to be in my body, Ooh, you know, wow. and um, she taught me, you know, how to uh, wear things that fit mm -hmm. with my silhouette. Mm, that compliment. That, that, yeah, that's so important. A lot of people think that, like, clothing is just for function. I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, our ancestors wore different colors and different hides, right, to represent yeah, different yeah. things. And so... Once you find good material, right, <laughs> that fits your frame and color, mm -hmm, that complements your skin tone, yeah, you're gonna like, look like a different person. It's like, I, I was trying to, when I was, you know, kind of coming up when I didn't feel comfortable, I was wearing things that were too big for me. Fashion? No, I need to be wearing things yeah. that hug. It's not, I have a yeah. Coke bottle figure. Period. Small, I mean, you know, yeah, big, small, big, right, and it ain't no 36, 24, 36 either. Like, no, you don't I'm have to be skinny like to be attractive, <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you, right? Or fashion is not just for thin people, fashion 42. is for everybody, Probably, you know. But you gotta know. be hips is 50 something, you gotta be comfortable. It's a 50 piece, 50 watt screaming, 50 watt, <laughs> you gotta be comfortable, right. And, and bold enough and home enough in body to know that it's worthy of being seen. First of all, this is the best conversation. <laughs> but a lot of people aren't gonna catch it. You know why? Because what does this mean for men to be in their body? Ooh, true. Well, let's talk about it. Okay, because we gonna talk about it because they think it's about just about divine feminism and this is just about, yes, we're, we're, we're taking up the space as the divine feminine. Right. But what does it mean for men to be in their body? Let's talk about and it. And how does that clash up against patriarchy, you know, toxic that masculinity, that machismo, part. all the things. That's good. Yeah, no, so Bell Hooks has entered. Bell Hooks has entered the group chat, Ashe, to our divine ancestor. All about love, new vision. Like, is it new vision or new visions? Uh, well, there are multiple visions, yeah. No. There is a plethora. I know, but I can't say the wrong title. Hold on. Oh, got it. You're you're uh, yeah. quoting new vision. And I yeah, quote. I was right. My spirit was right. My Espiritu Santo knew. Okay, y'all to stop it. Espiritu Santo. <laughs> Ooh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard Espiritu Santo. Gloria a Dios. <laughs> yeah, wow. Sorry, content intense, warning. Intense. Content warning for our Spanish speaking intense, Catholics intense. Yeah, and Bautistas. Yeah. Um, but no, all yeah, about my parents love. were uh, mm -hmm. charismatic Catholics. Ooh. So, but I was raised by my grandmother. Who was? She was a Christian. What kind of church did she go to? Well, Baptist? No. Pente Pentecostal? Well, listen, can I tell you something? Yeah. Well, this is the most interesting thing. as Because, you know, I grew up in South Central. So, South Central um, was very black. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, the color of this uh, oh, microphone. Lord. Like, <laughs> blackity, blackity, um, blackity, blackity, black. Screaming. And, um... <laughs> I'm like, and all these motherfucking uh, immigrants came in, yeah, and 
<laughs> we were like, fuck it. You need some help with your rent? We'll take mm-hmm. your morning session and you can have your night session. Love it. <laughs> oh, in there. Gloria Adios. And so, Brian. Gloria Adios. And so, my grandma, she actually was very Caribbean. And, and this is because uh, hell Caribbeans are yeah. 70 Adventists. Oh, SDA. Seven okay. Day Adventists. Baby. Seven Day Adventists don't be playing. They and, you know, Seven Day Adventists, they, um, they very interesting in that, like, sundown Friday. Listen. You better not be doing nothing. Nada. You're not, not damn fussing, thing. You're not doing nothing. So, for me, Fridays are actually very, like, I take my ass home. That's your Sabbath? That's, that's my Sabbath. Like, Fridays, I take my that's ass cute. home. And then, uh, and I don't be playing games in these streets, you know? <laughs> and I'm not listening and fussing and doing it. I want to chill. I like, my you. body remembers mm. that. Um, and then sun- Saturday is, you know, church all day. Um, and, but, you know, like... Now, I didn't have pork or shrimp until I moved to New Orleans. Oh, wow, no gumbo for you. I I had never <laughs> tasted pork. I'd never tasted no hot uh, dogs. bacon. No bacon? I had never tasted bacon. No, I had had hot dogs, but we just had beef hot dogs. Okay, got you. What is a life without bacon? I had never had bacon. I had turkey bacon. No, it's not the same. And honestly, the way turkey bacon is made up, you might as well just eat like a healthy, well, nitrate free. You just nitrate-free. looking for labels. Well, and we didn't really have that Pork growing bacon. up. We didn't really have that stuff growing up. So, anyway. Okay, um, but to your point, it's okay for you to go home on Friday nights because sometimes the niggas that be in the streets on Friday nights are not really hello. niggas you want to Th- capture. Not, no. So, when capture. we're talking about men who are divesting from patriarchy, yes, right? thank you for bringing us back. Because uh, one thing I'm going to do is bring us back. Hello. <laughs> Tongue emoji. So, <laughs> one, one thing is that it requires them to give up a particular source of power that comes from domination, mm. right? There's a power that is innate in us that is a creative mm. power. So the doms in the back. Oh, wait, when, hold when, on now. When uh, Beyonce said the doms is in the back, now is that I, what she said? Now, I pre- I, I'm dating this young man now, this gentleman caller now, and he identifies as a <laughs> sensual dom. Mm. Baby. When I tell you was giving everything it needs we're, to give. First of all, we're layering very many things. <laughs> Very much. Right. There are there are ways in which I hate there's that a phrase. lot of conversations that are happening. There right are ways now. how domination uh-huh. is a sickness. Okay. And it needs to be purged from society. Okay. And okay. there are pleasurable, sexual, sensual, okay. consensual ways okay. in which domination okay. is a very, very good thing. And so I'm thinking about BDSM, of course, which is like bondage, domination, sadomasochism, like that kind of thing. But it's all based and steeped in consent, which is not something that mm. men who are intoxicated by patriarchy and domination and power, they don't give a fuck about consent. Okay. Right? Well, talk, talk about that. Because we're going to then roll into how masturbation yeah. is the ultimate consent. It which is. Which is what you wrote about. Exactly. So, 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 you so. better know my book, girl. So <laughs> this is I in the pages. I cannot change it. A lot of people don't know this about me, but, like, I actually did not start. I could not read. I went to really fucked up schools, and I had a lot of trauma in my upbringing. And so I could not read until I was in the ninth grade. Wow. Like, literally, I had never read a chapter book. <gasps> this is a chapter book, y'all. I didn't know <laughs> This is a chapter. So I did not, I, I could not read. So I one. I didn't know that. Yeah. People don't know. I'm actually, a, like, for real introvert. Mm. Like, I'm shy. And, well, even more than shy, reserved. Yeah. I don't want your ass in my space. I don't yeah. want you, um... I don't want to share myself with you because mm, I need to discern if you're worthy of my that part. Sh- and I don't like you. hella people. I don't like boisterous ass shit. And now, now, girl. N- now, now, when girl. I feel very comfortable. <laughs> and when the spirit says yes, okay, then, then you're, you're gonna voice. Boister- yeah, I get boisterous because when the spirit says voice, you going voice, girl. Uh, very much so. Don't be on this podcast. Very much so. No, no, no. But. Um, so I grew up in this very specific way, right? Yeah. And I grew up very Christian. Yeah. And once my grandma passed away, I was 14, uh, and she passed away. And I started going to somebody else's youth church. Yeah. You were a youth pastor. I was. Youth and young adults. And yep. so I started going to this uh, youth church um, by myself. And that, it, I mean, till this day, I get in a bind, mm. like emotionally, mentally, spiritually, 
and I, I'm singing the songs that I sang in that youth yeah, church. I'm sure. Youth pastors and youth, ch- like, youth church is just such a sacred space. It is. It and, really and is. And you can't tell me nothing about it. Like, Aww. till this day, I'm just like, you know, I'm singing Kirk Franklin. I'm singing Fred Hammond. I'm late in the midnight hour. I'm scared. God's going to turn it around. Now, God is going to turn it around. I, it's going to work in your favor. Now, I, you're making me think of my babies when they were babies now. Many of them have graduated mm-hmm. from college, mm-hmm. you know, and they're in their young adult lives. Um, but it was it was so important for me to be a part of their journey because I got to see them in spaces that their parents did not. Yeah. I got to meet the significant others. I'm yeah. the cool pastor that's yeah. showing up yeah. with Domino's, you know, yeah. at lunchtime. Remember when yeah. you was in middle school, yeah. high school, like, oh, y'all don't got to eat cafeteria food? Like, y'all yeah. the shit, you know? Yeah. That's really what it was about. But it was you about- someone who was checking for you. Exactly. I want to come see, was, I'm was, coming to see about you. I want to know who you on Snapchat with. And shout out- Who is uh, that? Mike Perez, uh, <laughs> who was, uh, my, uh, he was not even a youth pastor, to be honest. Uh, the, cause the thing about church and like stuff is like, it's also very political. If you're not oh, the absolutely. pretty one, if you're not the, you know, uh, the, and I don't mean, the even mean that they're, one. that they're looking for you. I mean, like pretty as in clean. Like I was really that hood child, right? So like, mm. like my parents' grass was like to the Super fucking fence, high. and so like people, you know, were scared to drop me off and shit like that, right? The hood, yeah. Well, and because we were um, uh, the undesirables, Ooh, you know, the lepers, the, uh, the unkept. <laughs> you know, I'm screaming. Uh, this and, language and, is so <laughs> ridiculous. Well, no, but it is real, yeah. right? It is mm-hmm. real. It's some people see you mm-hmm. and see about you, like Period. you just said. And so uh, we were just talking about, uh, you know, we've been in our divine feminine. First of all, it is a drunk and <laughs> divine feminine up in here. Drunk so, and love. Yeah, our production, our production team <laughs> is probably, uh, you know, they're giving Baby, very much, night. yeah, they're giving femme. <laughs> they're giving femme energy right now. But, um, how can what would it look like for men to be free in their bodies nigga i would be free in my body to be able to walk down the street and not be you know a a, a helpless victim of street harassment and verbal assault and i mean i've been dealing with that group in new york city so i'm I'm, i grew accustomed to boys and men and old ass men right making comments about my body and so i feel like if men were able to first of all accept themselves and love themselves how they are right if we weren't so conditioned to think about gender as a as a construct and you have to live within these bounds or within these means in order to be considered a man like what we're identifying as toxic masculinity would disintegrate because then you wouldn't have to worry about being masculine or a man you could just be your fucking self Mm -hmm. and for so many men i'm thinking particularly of men black and brown men who are queer or gay right Mm -hmm. because of the rampant homophobia and queer phobia in black and brown communities Many of them don't feel, and I'm, I'm not a black or brown queer man, so I can't speak from experience, but as an ally and a co-conspirator and one who wants to see more of us accept ourselves, I know the gaps that exist in our mm. communities where we don't create safe, sacred space for you to be who you are and to still love you mm. and to still dap you up and to still kick it with you at the barbershop. And to, right? And so if there is a way for men, gay, straight, trans, all of the above, all the labels, right? To be seen yeah. and affirmed and celebrated and loved. Yeah. My God, we won't be having this conversation. 100%. About patriarchy and domination. Um, I just saw something that I wanted to, um, people who even of um, very high, uh, high access and high means Mm -hmm. don't have and who want to right because as you see people elevate and uh, mostly class wise right um we could see it with prince we could see it with michael we could see it uh, and i do mean michael jackson i was like who you talking about okay um they're wearing different clothes. Right. right. They're wearing different silhouettes. Yeah, they are. Right. They they wearing uh let me 
blouses. They wearing uh, whatever you know. they want because why are we assigning a meeting right. a meaning to a piece of clothing? And about as your- you see people who are less, uh, who are more disenfranchised and, right. less, and have less access. You see a certain silhouette, a certain like you know the, this is what this person is gonna wear. The the four X white T. Come on, of the tall. early two thousands. That's tall. In my white T, like on. this shapeless, boxless, tagless piece of cotton. This is your personality. Like it yeah. don't even have nothing spray painted on it, yeah. bro. Yeah, and so um, I just saw something. Tiana Taylor's husband, mm. Iman Shuper. Shumper. Shumper. Yeah. Shumper. Shumper. They're so cute. They're I adore very them cute. as a couple. I really um, hope their marriage is what You do you do talk about Tiana Taylor in the book too. I do. Listen, I'm in the you pages. Are in the pages. I'm in the pages. And Las Vaginas. So <laughs> why I talked about I couldn't read was that like now on the very low, I'm mm. like an, you know, avid reader. I'd be in the pages. As you are. You got hella books in your I'm house. Like, Oh yeah, you saw. I saw. I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. I be in a page. Uh huh. Her. I'm screaming. Um, but yeah, I be in the pages, and so um, I I really really like your book. Like, Thank you. And, and by like, I mean high key love. Yeah. You know. Uh, and so it was really really great. So one of the things that um. You talked about wait was, before you switch topics. We need to close the loop on something. Okay, because we talked about men being com- comfortable in their bodies and how, how that how I would help us. Right, mm. the third pillar in my four pillar framework is to heal. Okay, any, tell us about the four pillars. One, so two, the three, one four. was decolonize your Christianity or okay. your religion. Okay. Right, um, two is reclaim your African spiritual base and practices. Mm. Three is to heal your body related trauma. And when I think about the perpetrators of body-related mm. trauma, more often than not, it's men. Not saying that women don't. Yeah, not saying that NGC folks yeah, don't. Yeah. But by and large, yeah. it's men. So if you can get comfortable in your body and you can accept yourself and you can divest from patriarchy, domination, and power, then maybe, just maybe, you will stop harming people. Mm-hmm. And then I won't have to heal mm-hmm. from body-related trauma, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the third part. And the fourth part is to love yourself unapologetically, mm-hmm. which with a $4 billion beauty industry, right? Mm-hmm. We ain't even talking about colonialism colonization racism sexism color, consumerism consumer uh, just which tracks into consumerism uh, honey. capitalism which just right then tracks into all those things, like loving yourself hurts people's pockets yeah right accepting yourself yeah. hurts people's pockets but when yeah. i look in the mirror and i see no my Yvonne, legs look nice and brown okay per when i look in the mirror and i see norma yvonne osborne i'm like bitch mm. what Miss Surgery Norma. Wear. Big Norma Nana. Energy. Nana Norma. Big Nana Norma Energy. That's my Let's Nana. go. Don't fuck Let's with go. Her. Let's go. Big Nana Norma. So, yeah. Anna G. Uh, so that's Anna my hope G. for us. Hey. Did you see Beyonce yet? No. Are you going to see her? Uh, I'm going to see her. Uh, so it is Virgo season. It is. Shout out to the Virgos. Shout out to. It's tropical Virgo season. Big Virgo season. It's sidereal Leo energy though. Mm, well, I don't even. You didn't got too deep on me, sis. Okay, no. Uh-huh. So tropical astrology is based on the sun. Okay. Sidereal astrology is based on the moon. Okay. Because you know the sun is solar. It's got masculine uh, energy, okay. and the moon has feminine energy. So that oh. lunar energy, because like our my moon is Aries. My moon is Pisces, and we have a. Blue moon, blue full moon in Pisces tomorrow. At the time of this recording, it's the next day, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's a time to you know play. And this release is on Thursday. Okay, perfect. So we'll still be in that full moon energy. Yeah, it, it lasts three, it three days, plus or minus three days. Yeah, look at you. Come on, I'll, I mean, I don't identify as astrology girl, but I do believe but, in astrology. Yeah, and you know, I uh, what do I identify as? I just know a lot of shit. Like, I can't be telling you the nodes and the con- conjunction and the, oh, no, 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 I don't know all no, that. No, no, I just no, listen no, to no. what I have to go to astrology.com yeah, for that. Yeah, okay, I go to what the girlies say, mm-hmm. the girlies that I trust, and I go from there. But I mean, anywho, to your not point. Chani. Uh, Chani's all right with me. Chani's good. Yeah, I like Chani. I like Big yeah, Empress yeah. Energy. Big Empress. Big Empress yeah, Energy. Yeah, all I be loving. All I be loving. I'm sending you beautiful, <laughs> bountiful, <laughs> blessings. <laughs> Girl, if you ever come Listen, to the world, only the astrology videos. girls know, <laughs> know what we talking about right now. Okay, so here's the good stuff. Can I? 
Read. Get Girl, back into read, it. Read, Reader. That's what they say in the church. Read, Reader. Read, Reader. <laughs> right, 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 right. Speak well, Pastor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm screaming. So look at me. I ain't got my glasses on. Like, ah. I mean, you got glasses on. Those aren't readers, though. These aren't readers. These they are my just readers. Cute. They just No, they my, they my lookers. Lookers. Um, okay. So you <laughs> talk about uh, masturbation. Is a gift from God. Is a gift from God. Hallelujah. Getting acquainted with desire. Yes. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. So you talk to us about, you know, the idea of trusting yourself, of self-love is the best love, and how mm-hmm. masturbation truly is. And I'm going to just talk about this, and I want you to just run it. Okay. Uh, but masturbation is the safest way we can be in our body because mm-hmm. it's truly you consent with yourself. The most right? con- Masturbation is the most consensual sex one can have. Yep. And Either you do it or you don't. Um. Uh, and then you talk about, uh, which was, and again, this is for me. Okay, I say. You know, this is why I you do your that. work. Yeah, uh, I love that. Uh, but um, masturbation has unnecessarily vil- been vilified uh, by those who uh, grossly misinterpret the Bible. Mm-hmm. The scripture most Christians point to, because uh, we're talking to a a theologian we are yes that's me Uh, a (laughs) a theologian Uh, which means you're in the real pages i'm in the pages but you in the pages sis i am i have a master divinity Divinity school in columbia so i have a master of divinity and a master of theology okay so that's funny you are a two-time ivy league uh situation so columbia is not columbia in harlem columbia is in decatur georgia i appreciate the energy Oh, okay. One time Ivy League, but the the fact of the matter is, it's funny. Okay, well, Decatur, Georgia, even better. It's funny that they call it a master of divinity because you don't master divinity. But the fact mm. of the matter is that I do have a terminal degree in mm. the Come on, terminal esoteric degrees. study of religion and theology. And theology is a fancy word for the study of God. Theo means God. Ology means study. So I studied religion from a social and historical standpoint, mm. and I studied theology from a black liberation and womanist standpoint. Mm. And so everything- Say it I, again. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, well, I'm a visual person, so I heard it. Now yeah. I need to visualize the words sure. you're saying. I studied religion from a social and historical standpoint because you can't separate religion from social movements, right? And I studied theology from a black liberation and womanist standpoint. So I'm centering the liberation of black women and femmes and everything so, that I do. Religion from theology. Yeah. So let's talk about religion for a second because I know that's okay. you know when Ooh, you say so. the word religion, sometimes you gotta offer a content warning with it. So religion is from the a Latin. A lot of people have been hurt. Absolutely. And I see you mm. and I want to stand as a witness and a bearer of the divine to apologize on behalf of hell adjacent mm. Christians, Catholics, Baptists, SD, hell, whoever, adjacent? hell adjacent. That's what I call them. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who, you know, harmed you sure. because of what you believe or because of who you love or because of who you are, right? Um, and so religion comes from the Latin ligare, which means to fasten or to bind. And we all learned in elementary school that to re means to do something again. And so your religion should refasten you to God or rebind mm. you to the creator. Mm. Source, light, energy, universe, power, whatever language you use. I and want so, you to stay for a rising ritual, by the way. Okay. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Yeah. And so if your colonized religion, and I say that very inten- intentionally, caused you to feel far from your creator, beloved, that wasn't religion. That beloved. was dogma. Listen, the pastor right. is showing up. Uh, <laughs> beloved. Listen, that was when someone says beloved to me, I want to punch them in the face. Why? Uh, Coming from me? I'm just saying anybody. You say beloved Beloved to me? is triggering? Uh, beloved is triggering. Beloved is like, oh, um, sweetie. Sweet. Wow. Uh, uh, Everybody's loving. got their something. You just loving. never know. Okay. Love it. So no, no, no. I say bar- beloved. I say beloved though. I do be saying beloved. But when people be talking about a beloved community, a no, beloved, no, 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 yeah, no. No. Uh, when those people say it, beloved has lost its currency. Yeah. But, okay. But, but beloved. No. But like beloved 
Like that is some New York shit. Beloved, 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 beloved. It's like I'm beloved, screaming. beloved. I'll be like, bitch, I'll punch you in your fucking face. Okay. Darling and one. Darling right. one. No, but beloved, when you say beloved to me, I mean, we in relationships. So, like, I know, okay, yeah. this is my friend. That's what I say saying, to my community. This is what she's saying to me. But sometimes beloved be like a pat on your head. Ooh. Why do people I can beloved be? I can beloved, see that. Beloved, I can see beloved. that. And so to close this part, it's that that wasn't religion. That was dogma. Right, that was indoctrination. Now, tell me the difference. What does dogma mean? So, dogma is like a set of beliefs mm. that we hold as a community to be true. So, the funny part is, is that what a spiritual leader holds as an individual may not be the same as what the whole faith community believes as a community. Mm. So that's where you start to get in trouble. And that's where I broke out because yeah. I let my individual faith system and belief mm. system become what the community believes. Mm. And so it was a time for us to explore Christianity and to reclaim it as an African traditional religion. Mm. It was a time for us to talk about Ifa. It was a time for us to talk about hoodoo, right? What is Ifa? Great question. So Ifa is a Yoruba spiritual tradition and belief system that comes out of West Africa. The tribe is called Yoruba. And it holds the idea that Ifa is the spirit of wisdom and that you consult or divine with Ifa to get clarity on your journey. And there are also um, these deities called the Orishas who each one of them, there's like over a thousand deities. <laughs> when, you, when you talk about any African or indigenous religion, and this is the it's not just one, Yeah, but there's a great pantheon. But there are probably like 12 or so that are like the most well-known. And they oh, talk about all, Yamaya. Yamaya, Oshun, Oshun Shango, Ogun, Shango, exactly. Elegba, Ashe, Ashe, yeah. Ashe, Ashe, Obatala. Ashe, yeah. and they all have like jurisdiction over these and particular these elements also mirror in nature. In Latin America, so we talk yeah. about the black man get down a lot, right? These yeah. mirror in Latin America, Santeria, Santeria yeah, right? Condomble, Ashe, in Brazil, which it's is the diaspora Latin, which is for also me, Latin America, yeah, yeah, and so uh, I love to bring that stuff together, mm -hmm. and that's us. And that's the black so and brown get down. Huh? So the black beautiful. and brown get down is the diaspora. I, I'm going to close this episode by talking about one of my colleagues from Yale Divinity School. Her name is Aracelis. Aracelis is Puerto Rican. Not Ara Aracelis with an S on the end. Aracelis. Mm -hmm. Damn. She shit. was. She more than one. She plural. <laughs> <laughs> my sis is plural. Right, what does that mean? <laughs> Set, skies? Uh, no. Aracelis. Does it not mean rainbow? No. Oh, That's no, that beautiful. means Apple uh, uh, I didn't know. I don't, I don't know. It means something. It but means celestial, something celestial, I, I, probably. Okay. So I grew up in New York City where Boricuas and Dominicanos, they were going head to head. Yeah, and I was like, what is going on with y'all? What are you doing? Fighting. Right? Yeah, unfortunately. And we got a lot of shit about us. You know? Yeah. Colonialism. <laughs> and colonization. And, and colonization. So for her, as a Puerto Rican, she would claim her African an yeah. ancestry first. She would claim the European side because the colonizers came through and then her Spanish speaking part. So it was like her holy trinity, if you will. I had never seen anyone from a Spanish speaking country claim being African. Mm. And that, I mean, you're the second one, okay? Right, clearly. Or maybe there've been others in my path that I just don't remember, my bad. But like there is something really powerful and potent about people from all walks of the diaspora yeah. claiming yeah. and reclaiming yeah. and boasting yeah. about their Africanness. Yeah. And that makes me so thrilled to yeah. be a part of the diaspora. And part of the black and brown and get so down. Beautiful. We are fucking fine as shit. I wouldn't want to be nothing else. Sorry to these not other a hoes, single thing. Not a single thing. But else. I wouldn't want to be nothing but a black woman. Yeah. I love it. And yeah. I hope if I do come back again, and that's a big if that well, I'm a black woman. Sign that contract, that second I round. might not know what I know you now. Might be like, Unless there's some work that needs to get done in my lineage and my bloodline that only I can do. Uh, can we bring you back for a second conversation on yeah. healing Ooh, the lineage? Yeah. Because I would love that. When I talk about, when I would really fully think about what I have to do mm -hmm. as, um, and who I was, 
what I so the idea of an of ancestry. Yeah. Let me let me just bring this into it right now. And we're gonna talk about masturbation. We're gonna get the fuck out of here because we gotta okay. go. Um the idea why and why for us we have a director of remembering. Shout out to our director of remembering whoop, Nate. Whoop, Nate. Right. Um shout out to him. Not um, a one syllable name, a two syllable name. Nate <laughs> <laughs> Right. No. Nate. Go ahead. Nate. 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 Cameron. Well, it's actually uh oh. Nathaniel? Is it Nathaniel? Don't be calling his whole government on his podcast. podcast. Well, he, maybe but he in, it. in uh in uh Ethiopian uh, Girl uh, in make Amarinya, your point. in Amarinya, not not L. Girl, make your not, point. Not L. She is giving etymology. It went from Nate to not not L. Oh my goodness. So listen. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Here's what I'm gonna say. Go ahead. The reason for us to remember yes. is to remember the greatness yes. of who we are. Ashe. We built tools, technology, wisdom, knowledge. Yeah. We are just... We're just what? All the, <laughs> all the things. We are so we beautiful. Are. We are so dense. We are, we are so fucking decadent. Ooh. We all the Opulence, things. Lavish. Opin- yes. Indulgent. Mm. We all the things. We all the things. We all the things. We are. And so we need to exist in this life. We do. With all of those things. We do. But we have a duty. Okay. To our descendants. Okay. Those who come after us. Iba, Shondo, glory. Huh. Seven generations ahead. That's, 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 that's the African cosmology you speaking now, sister. To build. Yeah. To imagine, to dream, to do, to operate, yeah. to be. Ashe. And we will do that. We are doing that. This is that, right? And, and we have to do it in such a way that is with integrity, mm-hmm. with character, with intelligence, with operating in all of our gifts. For sure. And so uh, it is so critical. And so that's high level. Here's big shit. But the, the real shit is you and your family, my Briggs. <laughs> Briggs, Osborne, Osborne, Ishmael, Briggs, all that. Osborne, all that. That's us. You you have a duty to Briggs and Osborne. I do, and, and there's something you have come to do. Preach, in preach this up. lifestyle, <laughs> in this life, there is. There have something you have come to do. I receive Briggs, it. Briggs, Osborne, I receive it, and you will complete that mission. And you will do that thing. I receive it. And you will be in that purpose. And that is why we must always operate in our highest being. And I don't mean to get too fully. Oh, you in, girl? But but like that's what it means. That's what it means. Not just to be in this big thing. Oh, we're fighting racism. We're fighting whatever it is, the isms and Mm -hmm. the things. But it's like, yeah, and you have a personal duty to your lineage. And to your point, what heals you heals the collective. In African cosmology, we believe that when you heal, you heal seven generations before and seven generations to come. And so I am acutely, and indigenous folks, Mm -hmm. and I am acutely aware of the fact that when I center myself, in the words of my mentor, uh, one of my mentors, Dr. William Coleman, he wrote a book called Tribal Talk. He says, when you choose yourself, you're choosing God. Mm. Choosing yourself is choosing your ancestors. Yes. And so when you talk about remembrance and mm. remembering, right? For those of us who grew up in the church, you grew up with this rite and ritual called communion, where mm. it was like, whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Remembrance. Whatever you do, do in remembrance of you. To remember can mean to recall. I didn't come to preach, but since I'm here, to mm. recall, to mm. think back, mm. but to remember, R-E dash member mm. means to put back together, to literally remember yourself, body, mind, soul and spirit and so that's what i'm doing in this book is to help us remember who and who we whose we are but to also remember to put ourselves back together again because life be lifing right capitalism be capitalisming and like shit be shitting but you when you drink some tea and instead Mm -hmm. of burning the roof of your mouth because you're trying to get to the meeting in the Mm -hmm. car you just give yourself time and space to sip from a from a mug right Mm -hmm. that says Mm -hmm. like juju bay is my ancestor's baby when you 
instead of rescuing all the adults in your family, whether it's financial, spiritual, physical ailment, right? And you put your phone on D&D &D and you go take a nap. When you keep your camera off for the Zoom meeting. Well, when you, you ask one time and don't be on the codependency. Okay, wait, come. When you heal your codependency, when instead of calling up that fuck boy, you go rub one out because you know he brings drama oh, with him. Shit. Yeah, I'm on your block. <laughs> <laughs> right? That too is remembrance and that too is healing. I can't stand And ultimately, I would dream of a world where black women and femmes and brown women and femmes and those who love us and support us are free and safe and soft. And that yeah. to me is the ultimate black and brown get down. Ooh. Mic drop. Y'all fancy ass mics. <laughs> Sensual Faith, The Art of Coming Home to Your Body is available in paperback, ebook. I read it. Um, audiobook. You can find me at LavonBriggs.com. That is my online digital home. I'm on Instagram all the time, child. Find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, all the things. Let's keep the conversation going. If you would like to learn in community with me, I have Sensual Faith Academy, aka my Patreon at patreon.com slash LavonBriggs. And if you just have been blessed by the warrior on today and you want to bless me with some money so you can do that on cash app dollar sign pastor bay p-a-s-t-o-r-b-a-e venmo is at levon briggs zell and paypal or levon.briggs at gmail.com and i'll be back on the black and brown get down to talk about healing your blood line period shout out to Listen. mary shout out to our voice nuestra voz shout out to OVNV. fucks with us do y'all have a chant is there a chant O V M V. You gonna create this? <laughs> you gonna create it? Listen, shout out to Nate. Thing, shout out to Taylor. Listen, you just did an outro. Shout out to I Ty. Can't let you go. I cannot let you go without without you uh, doing two things. One, talking about masturbation, and two, because we gonna talk about masturbation. Okay. And here's why I said it because so many people are repressed. So many people are like. Okay. Are, hold on, hold on, hold on. So many people are have really. Uh, they got that shit fucked up in their head. They do. And then I want to. I want to talk. I want you to do the rising ritual with us. Okay. We're gonna talk about that. Yeah. Um. They're often talking about Genesis thirty-eight, which is the yeah. scripture that talks about the seed was spilled onto mm -hmm. the ground, and they're like, "Oh, look, that was masturbation, and that's evil and sinful." Okay. First of all, use let's your talk head. about relax. Use relax. your head, relax. beloved. I should have known the man that I divorced was was gonna end in divorce because he ain't like to get Clitoral, paid. Vaginal, That's another anal com combo. She's talking about the different kinds of orgasms. You are skimming the book. Let and me talk about master social currency. <laughs> Mary, let me talk about masturbation. Our pleasure matters. You gonna reflect? Y'all cut, cut and all of this, y'all. Let me talk I'm about affirm. I am a sensual being. I this is why y'all need to be drinking liquor pleasure. on this podcast. My desires matter, and that's real. Look, and that's <laughs> uh, okay. Now that she got that out of her system, masturbation. If you grew up hearing that masturbation is a sin, oh, I hit the thing. If you grew up hearing that masturbation is a sin, first of all, I want to offer an alternative definition of sin. For some people, it's like you know doing bad things that's going to send you to hell. I presuppose that sin is actually separation from God or separation mm. from the divine. Mm -hmm. So if there's any thought or belief system that causes you to feel far from your creator, I identify that as a sin. So that's number one. Number Which two. Which makes a lot of things more sinful. Like colonialism and racism. Correct. Right? Not correct, fucking correct. consensual. Or, or just eating shit that you know ain't good for you. Right? If if it, I'm if that, I'm lactose intolerant <laughs> and and I know I'm on <laughs> you know and I it just makes me Sometimes sick. the milkshakes and the cheese be too good though. I know, but if I know that that makes me sick, I feel far. I'm calling for God. I'm calling for Does Jesus. Does that make you feel that actually means you're closer? <laughs> I, I'm calling for Jesus. I'm screaming. Okay, so that being said, when people turn to Genesis 38, which is this, you know, Old Testament scripture, there's this guy Onan, and he's having sex with his dead brother's widow, now, Tamar. So we don't want dead. The, the, the brother who's the firstborn uh -huh. died. And so in that culture, it was customary for the next closest of kin to impregnate the widow so that the first son would have an heir because that's what they needed. So Onan 
was messy and he didn't want to impregnate his dead brother's widow because that child was gonna get all the inheritances of a firstborn being. And he was like, why the fuck am I gonna give up my sperm, my seeds to impregnate this lady and I'm not even gonna get the benefits of it. So he was ashy, he was a dusty nigga, right? And when we do that and we see, when we do that and we see that one, not only was he not masturbating, because that's a solo act or done in, you know, with partner or partners, but he was actually having intercourse with the woman who was there. And instead of, you know, ejaculating into her to impregnate her, to give her the very thing that their culture was asking for, he would pull out and ejaculate onto the ground. So this woman is having to have sex with her dead husband's brother in order to procreate an heir. And instead of him impregnating her, he's wasting the seed on the ground. So one, we're erasing Tamar, which is sinful. And two, it has nothing to do with masturbation has everything to do with not fulfilling your call and your duty as a man. Mm. That's the truth of that scripture. Shit, I don't know. I, I, honestly, you lost me. Um, when? Well, I'm gonna go get champagne. I'm oh sorry. my God. Okay. Uh, you lost to, me. Here's we'll why. cut that whole part. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're drunk, aren't you? No. You're tipsy. No. You're happy. No. <laughs> It's just, I'm a visual learner, and so it's like, okay. Oh, shit. So, culturally, mm -hmm. these people... <laughs> can I have a piece of paper and a pen so I can draw this for her, please? And we gonna close. I promise y'all we gonna close. And can yeah, I have because a... because culturally, culturally... And so can you're I saying have a there, there are rules, or people, and there are things that people abide by culturally yeah. that are different than religion and that is different than uh, uh, theology. Or theology, okay. culture. Here, theology is culture, but here's the thing. The Bible was written some 2,000 years ago, and it wasn't even written. And culture evolved. It was piecemealed, right? It's, it's, it's basically like if me and you go out and party, mm -hmm. right? And then they like, all right, Mary, what happened last night? You write it down. And they be like, all right, LaVon, what happened last night? And I write it down. Right. And they put them together and be like, okay, where's the overlap? Mm -hmm. We're going to have two totally different experiences. Right? Yeah, I'm black, gospel. you're black and native. I'm Caribbean American, you are from the indigenous people. I'm 5'10", you're... You're not... Uh, nigga, uh, you're not 5'10", <laughs> right? So... <laughs> it's but I'm 5'4". Right, you're 5'4", which means we physically have different vantage points, yeah. right? And so you can't expect you're to five have... Ten. I That's am. Real. You can't, I'm actually five nine and a half, but I just say five ten because yeah, it sounds cool. I'm five four and a half. Okay, so look. I say five five. So this nigga, I forget his name. Let's call him um Jermaine, right? Jermaine and Tamar, right? We're married. Mm -hmm. Jermaine dies. He did. Yeah. Tamar is alive. Jermaine's next oldest brother is Onan. Mm. Now, in their culture, the next closest of kin needs to get the, the wife oh, pregnant wow. in order to and create an heir. It's like ancient Israel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Onan and Tamar are fucking and she's not getting pregnant mm. because this nigga keeps spilling his seed on the ground. Wow. He keeps ejaculating wow. onto the ground. Out. He's pulling out. And wow. so the spilling of the seed has nothing to do with masturbation because he's not masturbating. He's fucking wow. Tamar. It's because he did not fulfill his covenantal duty wow. of, of, being, of producing, of producing an heir, the heir for the family. He was putting himself wow. before the family. What did Jay-Z said? No one wins when the family feuds. Like, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. was going that's on. The so, wow. I my rest job. my case. Okay. Essentially, masturbation is a gift from God. It stops you from messing with fuckboys because how many times have we been in relationships with men because the dick was good, but the energy was toxic, but we stayed because the dick was good, yeah. right? And yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's a way for us to get to know our body, to reclaim it after harm, yeah. to just know what we like so we can share with our partner and partners. Yeah. And so we can activate our creative energy because it's attached using the yogi system to our sacral chakra. And mm -hmm. that's se sexual and sensual, but it's also creative. It's also mm -hmm. where all of our great ideas and our creations come from so mm. child i masturbated before i got here praise the lord mm. real shit real shit <laughs> welcome to black and brown get down <gasps> ah! i put on my I, jewelry I, just I, to go to the, the bodega best.
You've been the best, 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 best. Thank um, you. Yeah, you've been the best. Um, I uh, say you, you the interviewee. Como se dice? Guest. Guest. Uh, you've also been the most disruptive. That you, sounds you, right. You, you're very the best disruptive. and the most disruptive. Uh, I would like disruptive. an award for that, please. So I already I have an Emmy. I would like a most disruptive. No, so award we're just gonna keep well. rolling because I, you know to we're close. Gonna, well, yes, and so Sister. one, so one into into uh, our next segment, which is oh, the right. juice. Uh, what is that? The juice is basically a segment where we say, "Hey, this person." Is the person who we should show all the love to? Right yes, now. and that person to is me. me. Well, yes, you. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're talking about somebody. My else. God, My like God. an ancestor? No, I am a Leo. Shakari Richardson. <gasps> yes, my girl. That baby is back with a vengeance, Tell honey. Tell me why. Tell me why. Because y'all niggas was shitting on her. Tell me her why. Her mom transitioned, or was yeah. it her grandma? Her grandma. Believe. Her grandma transitioned. They were hella close. And those of you who were raised by your abuelas, your abuelitas, your grandmas, your nanas, your, mother, your big mamas, like, whatever. Like, you know what it's like to lose that energy because they. Honestly, you go dumb. You yeah. go wild. Listen, as someone, my, my mother transitioned about two years ago. In December, and so she's a couple months from two years. And when I tell you, if you've known me, if you've only known me over the last two years, mm. you don't know me because I've been stupid. Yeah, I've been gone. You know I've what I'm heard. Saying? I my mother is still in this realm, so I don't know. But oh, I have heard that you when your mother operate. transitions, something just unlocks. And and I get that. And Good so, and bad and whatever. Right. Also, there are some things that are not going to be healed in your lineage, and we'll talk about yeah. this on the next episode that I come to, um, until Period. they transition. But when they do, that shit rocks you, right? And so if my sis is training for the Olympics and she got to smoke a little ganja, she got to smoke a little so joint. She you know was disqualified, which is wild to me, cause, and vilified because you got niggas taking steroids. And vilified she was. for being on the cannabis. Which is natural and from the earth, period. Right? But the way that we criminalize black women and just how hard society is on black women when we when they don't live up to the expectations we put on them. Yeah. Because I would assume that a sister grieving her mother or her grandmother is going to smoke a little something, something. And she started off this Olympic kind of uh, track season uh, saying, hey, I'm not back. I'm better. Um, and I love that for her. And I you remember love, what she said? I that? do remember. And I love that she shows up in the fullness of her black womanhood. She's giving you lash. She's yeah. giving you braid. She's giving you wig. Listen, if she wig, needs to she wig, wave off, if she need to rip that wig off <laughs> before the race, my girl ran a hundred meters in nine point motherfucking six seconds. Period. Who is doing that? Yeah. Nobody. She killed that. She killed that. Sorry to these Jamaicans. Murked. Okay. Sorry Listen, to Shelly Ann, who was in the hospital. Shout out to my reggae girls. Boom, 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 boom. Shout out to my reggae to girls. To my dance hall girls, yes. right? But I, Shakari, if you ever hear this, like, I'm not old enough to be your TT, but I'm your big sister. I love you. I'm riding for you. I'm so proud of you. And I know that it was a fucking hard time. Yeah. But your ancestors got you. Your God got you. Your community got you. And we got you. And you just keep And we running. riding with you, baby. Run, baby. We run. We riding with you, baby. Run, Shakari, run. Hello, period. Okay. So now we're going to move into our rising ritual. Our rising ritual is something we do every single uh, podcast episode. Okay. The Rising Ritual is about us helping people remember how to do rituals. I say. So, you know, you a ritual girl. I am. Oh, excuse me. Not the set. Hello. <laughs> I am a ritual girl. Uh, you are a ritual girl. And so this ritual, we, we just help people remember, okay, here's what you're supposed to do when you're trying to get some energy off of you. Yeah, yeah, here's yeah. Here's what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. I think what would be good is um, you know, you talk a little bit about altar work. I do in in the book. Sure, and uh, and altars are usually built in whatever it is your tradition, your cultural tradition Correct. is, right? Correct. And uh, so if there's supposed to be water on the altar, mm -hmm. that's your cultural tradition. Mm -hmm. If there's supposed to be fire, right? Mm -hmm. The elements. Yeah. If there's supposed whatever it is. Yeah. Um. So tell us about uh, a little, just literally like. 
60 seconds on uh, altar work and what what should be on an altar? So for ancestral work and veneration, all you need is a space in your home that contains two elements, water and fire. Water is a cleansing agent. It's a healing agent. It's a portal. Fire is a purifying agent. It's a portal. They both signal to spirit, hey, stop by here. Like somebody wants us here. And so you can have a cup or a glass filled with water. You can have a candle, preferably white, but any color will do. And you can just announce yourself using whatever name feels good to you and just tell your ancestors like hey I'm here and I want to commune with you right also and this is you know a bonus is that I believe that you are your first altar so anything that here, you're your going body, to do your being your living yep, is your to altar. your altar yourself cleanse yourself heal yourself purify yourself get to the water we so live in New means- Orleans uh, get, get to, to the, the river. Water. Get to the lake. If you can't do that, take if a you shower. Can get in take a bath. Water. Yeah. Right. If you can get in a bath, in a tub. If you can't take a bath, take a shower. You can't take a shower. shower wash your put feet. Put salt on your head. You can't Let wash your down. feet. Wash your hands. You can't wash your hands. Swallow your saliva because we're mostly water, right? But to just say that you are a returned ancestor. You are a very present help in a time of trouble for your lineage. You are a being that is walking the earth that And so why should we do work for our lineage? Here. People are dealing with addiction. People are dealing with uh, all kinds For liberation, of baby, right? And healing we, is a we, part of that. That is the goal. But the things we encounter today, mm-hmm. domestic violence, drugs, mm-hmm. alcoholism, uh, poverty, mm-hmm. uh, lack of... Here's the thing, right? In ancestral veneration and healing, and I know we're coming to a close, those things help to heal your lineage, but also sometimes, sis, it's not that fucking deep. Sometimes it's mm. not a generational curse. It's capitalism. Because capitalism mm. requires there to be people on the bottom mm. who are poor, right? And so you can talk about, oh, generational poverty. Okay, well, let's talk about redlining right let's talk about lack of access to health care and education let's talk about the yeah. elements that exist so it's a both end you got to yep. be able to hold space yep. one foot in the ancestral realm one foot in the physical realm well so and that's uh, sensual faith the art of coming that, home to your body <laughs> hello period um okay well that is your rising ritual for the yes. episode uh, thank here's you so a much. rising ritual yes when you wake up in the morning and you pour libation for your ancestors also pour libation for yourself pour a glass of water and speak intentions and affirmations into the water right i speak peace prosperity abundance joy love Daily. care into the water and as you're drinking it imagine all of those elements just over sinking into every one of your cells into your bloodstream right like you you use what you got what did what did Mar- mariah carey say i'm gonna do the best i can with what i got right you got water give thanks for that clean water speak into that water drink that water and let that water heal you mm. well you heard it here the rising ritual her at the black and brown get down podcast over um, to the bodega over to the bodega <laughs> We are so grateful for you. Thank you so much Aww. for coming today. You're welcome and you're um, worthy. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for having um, me. It has been low key. It's giving. It's giving parts one and two because yes. uh, we are going on three hours. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if it's giving three hours, but. Thank you to giving, these producers. It's giving uh, longevity. It's giving. Um, cannot be contained in one hour. You cannot. I can't. You cannot. There's layers. There's depth. And um, there's about to be food. Let's go. Praise God. Yes. And so what we are going to do now is say thank you so much for coming. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Yeah. Muchas gracias. Wow. 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 And uh, what else? I mean, please follow us on YouTube, on uh Spotify, Spotify, Apple, like, Apple. share, follow, subscribe, rate five stars. Think all one, two, three, four, five. Um, fucks with us. I mean, it's it's beautiful. So thank you so much. Um, I think that's it. Stop being. Yep, that is it. Thank you so much for uh, listening today, and we'll see you at the next episode. Peace, boss. Later, later. Peace.